Hey, what's up? It's Rob Gordon, the wingman. I just woke up a little while ago and I saw the weather looks really good. So I got on WhatsApp and the Instagram and rounded up the boys. And it sounds like we're going to do a how to do a down winger video. And we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, no misadventures, but you never know. Joe saw a shark yesterday out through where we're going to be going. So no sharks, no sharks, no whammies. A long downwinder requires a good working knowledge of your local spots and also the local wind patterns. You'll see on this HRRR model, this is a 10 o'clock forecast. You can see the wind in LA generally comes from the northwest down to the southeast. There's some variation, but that's the thermal and you know general clearing wind pattern. That means you can get a pretty substantial wind shadow in the Santa Monica Bay area. And that's because the coastline curves and tucks in behind the Santa Monica Mountains right there. So we decided to go from Point Mugu and then down to Zuma Beach because that gives us a nice unobstructed run. Once you pass Point Doom there by Zuma Beach, that little point, you really get into some iffy wind. Now, don't get me wrong, Topanga is one of my favorite spots. It just requires a little bit more wind, maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour less there, or a good strong clearing wind. And then you also see down there on the right, that's where Cabrillo is, and it's always windy there because it is in line with that wind pattern again. So there's our run. It's, I think it's about 13 miles if you go as the, as the crow flies, but obviously we're going to add a lot more than that. And then here's the one o'clock. So we decided to go and meet at one at Zuma Beach to drop off our cars. And that's kind of tricky, figuring out the logistics of who's going to leave what car where. How do you get the gear up? You know, what do you do if someone gets lost on the way? But we'll sort that out later. And the wind is still good at three o'clock, still really strong at three o'clock all the way through to Zuma, which is where we're going to be. So you need to be thinking about where's the wind when. And five o'clock, it's coming down a little bit at Zuma, but that's a good solid window. I might do a, a video on forecast models as well. This is the HRRR, and it's really good. You can click it on windy, and it gives you the next couple of days pretty accurate down to the local level. All right, I'm charging this VHF radio. I don't know if it's VHF, UHF. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. It says it's waterproof. I also got this little uh, waterproof case. If the winds were offshore or anything like that, it would be a much bigger deal. The winds are side shore. It might be a little bit off though. So not a bad idea to have it. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring it today, get it charged up in case. I'm already going to be carrying like, I think two cameras and my phone. So I don't even know how to use it. You're supposed to test these out, you know, with a friend and stuff. I think channel 16 is the Coast Guard Rescue Channel. So that's the one I would try if we get in trouble. But, you know, I would just try all of them. <laughs> I don't know. I also have this little cheap waterproof case that I use to take my phone uh, and just put it around my neck. I use some cordula instead of whatever it came with. And then I also put it inside a plastic bag and then I turn everything off. And then you have to use the accessibility settings so that you can touch the phone through here because you can't really use the home button. And the way to do that is you go to settings, scroll down to accessibility, click that, and then go to touch and turn on assistive touch. And then you'll see this little guy pop up and that allows you, you can move around wherever you want. And when you touch it, on the screen, it allows you to go to the home and unlock your phone. I have the iPhone SE 2, which has a physical button on the side, which if I press that even through the plastic, it will pop up that little button and I can get to the home screen and unlock my phone. You can also set up a shortcut right there, or I have it set up with a shortcut with a triple tap of the home button will turn the button on. But then I do like Strava for the track. You know, you should still have, uh, if you need to, you know, make a phone call, you could take it out of here and make a phone call. So far, so good with the waterproofing. Other people just use their Apple Watch. I don't have an Apple Watch. I've heard that it works okay, but it's not quite as good a signal as your phone. So if you get separated from your friends, you have to have a, a way to get in contact with them. So uh, WhatsApp is pretty good because sometimes you can send the messages and you can't make a phone call, but you also want to be able to have their numbers as well. So we have a WhatsApp group, but yeah, you can get separated and then you just want to be able to make sure you can make a phone call at least. If one person or has a radio, I think that's great too. If you're going to go in, off, in any wind that you could get blown offshore. 
Uh, if you're on a lake or something, then you probably don't need a radio because you're going to end up on land at some point, right? <laughs> Unless it's the Great Lakes. Uh, that could take a while. But yeah, I might just do the phone today and then some of the guys do the Apple Watch. But make sure you have a plan with your guys. What are we going to do if someone gets separated? Because we did do one downwinder one time and it was going to be a downwinder upwinder and then the wind died and I went back upwind and then the guys didn't and then I got stuck and then they thought I was lost and stuff and then I tried to prone surf with some people and I think they got mad at me for for not <laughs> letting them know where I was you know just in case uh I get stuck out at sea gotta have some calories it's a good sign when you can see the white caps coming over the hill from far away so I got to Zuma Beach a little bit after one. That's where we plan to meet up and also where we're going to finish the run. The rest of the crew showing up. Horacio, we're doing the we're doing a video for this one. We're going to end up in Tobago where? No, no, here, I think. Here. Oh, okay. This is a professor. Woo! The professor. We're loading up all the gear. Luckily, we got a truck today. We're going to leave three cars here. There's four of us. We're going to leave three cars down here and then take one truck all the way up. Sometimes you got to take two cars. Hopefully you make sure you got everything because there's no turning back. <laughs> We're getting ready to take off. Do a dummy check. You don't want to be driving back both ways. And then also you got to make sure you have some landmarks so we know where to come in because this is like a 15 mile or something. So, you know, look around and see what's around i don't i don't know it does it all looks the same to me the ufo van nice joe did you call in sick today is that, is that i should true? i should what be working right now we all did yeah that was jesse wait really yeah on the van that, and that's just his van, yeah. Tell him, to, he, tell him he, to drive up. I can actually follow you in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you guys are safe. You're the expert at the downwinders. No, no. Point Magoo. It uh, feels windy. Not as windy as earlier. Uh, I'd like to use my 5 because it doesn't have a leak in it. See that fence line? You go on the other side of that fence, the Navy will shoot you. So don't go on that fence line over there. Heard it Woo! here first. So, Joe, what did you do? What I did you, need what? six nuts. I brought five. So, so what's going on over here? Huh, that doesn't look right. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, so I take my uh, phone. I put it under here. That way it's underneath the vest. I'm not going to start it recording just yet, though. just like that we were off somewhere around two o'clock launching at point mugu we were all on five meters i was on my pinion uh joe was on his ensis five meter that i had just repaired on a major repair luckily it held up and his three screws on his foil and then uh Horacio and alex were on five meter ocean rodeos really nice alula wings i was on the viper 170 so i could film well and then, you know, get that maneuverability. Joe was on a small Ono foil, like 800. Alex was on a Lyft 120 HA. And then Horacio was on the biggest foil, uh, the 1600 uh, Armstrong, like not even a high aspect foil. He has a an MA now, but he, he was amazing at riding swell on that 1600. Uh, the shore break wasn't too, too bad getting out. It took a couple of hits, but nothing too bad. So have a look for yourself, uh, doing something a little different with the riding footage this time. Everyone got out okay. Looks like Alex is over there ripping. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get to Oh, here's Joe. Oh, no. Oh, camera pressure. <laughs>
Leo, a couple of guys out. We'll see who it is. We'll go say hi. What's up, Brian? Yeah, we came from Mugu. Yeah, we're going to Zuma. Oh. That was awesome. We got the car all packed up. I'm going to take Arasio back up to where we dropped off the car. Alex is <laughs> dancing still. He, he gets he gets to go home right away. He doesn't have to do the dirty work. Oh, whoa. <laughs> uh, guys, that was awesome. That was awesome. It feels stronger than 24. It feels oh, windy, right? It's because the swell is so big. No, it's more than 24 for sure. Well, gusting to 28. That's it. No, five knots. Oh, five knots. We would have gone around the it. corner and get stuck there. Oh. We would not have made it. Oh, wait, it's 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 says it's 24. Yeah. Five meter was a great call for us. Perfect. Call. Somebody wanted to put a six meter. I'm not going to say who. I thought, I just thought we might need it. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, see ya. <laughs> I had to drive Horacio back up to Point Magoo to pick up his car. Just perfect day. Perfect day. <laughs> it really was a perfect day. Sunny, good wind. Swell was pretty good. Um, you can see here's our track. We, you know, we really took our time in the first half, just having fun. I really enjoyed some of the spots, like finding out where the good swell is on the, the whole coast. And then, uh, you know, once we got to like County Leo, Joe realized he was going to be late for dinner. And so you can see we went a little bit more direct after we got to that halfway point. Took us total like almost three hours. It's about 13 miles, but we did uh, almost 30 miles because of, you know, zigzagging and having fun. And I thought that was it. I thought I would come back. I'd download the footage and, and that would be it and edit this video. But... I got really lucky a couple of days after this. I wanted to go down to Cabrillo, and I really wanted to do a downwinder, but none of these guys like to go down there. They live up further north. But I show up, and I get a call from my friend Nexter, and he says, hey, a couple of guys from Belmont are going to do a downwinder. Do you want to join them? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. So I showed up at, uh, at Cabrillo to wing, and then these guys are doing a downwinder to Belmont. So I think I'm going to hop on it and throw it into the video. I'm going to try out a higher aspect foil, and uh, hopefully this works. There's zero planning on this one. So if this turns into a disaster, it'll show how important planning is. So on this one, I definitely wanted the radio because Cabrillo to Belmont, you're outside the Los Angeles Harbor and the breakwater, and there's just no off-ramp. Plus, Irwin and Sam had their own radio, so we could talk to each other in theory. I went out first because I needed to make sure my high aspect foil was in the right spot with the right shim. I also wanted to see what the wind was doing. So I was on a five and the wind was nuking. Uh, I went to hook in on my harness and I realized I didn't have my harness hook. 
I have the NSI mini spreader bar from their harness because I've broken the nugs a couple of times. So I had to go back in. You see Irwin coming out here. Luckily, I had an old nug that I've broken and duct taped back together. There's Sam on the left. So they had already parked Irwin's truck down at Belmont. So we were ready to go, but I had to go look for that other harness hook. I had also convinced Dominique to join us on the run. It's always nice to have four people because that lets you have two groups of two in case someone is going a little slower or a little faster or there's a gear problem or whatever. It also increases your chances of gear problems because you got more people for something to go wrong. He was riding this new board by Guillermo Longo, High Tide Surf Co. This thing is awesome. Guillermo used to do windsurfing boards and surfboards, been doing it for a long time, and now he's doing wing boards and it looks so good. It's really lightweight and the rails are really strong. The, you know, foil box is in the right spot. I'm interested in having him build me one because I've repaired my froth so many times. It's like 16 pounds at this point, which is just crazy. And I want something a little bit more durable, a little bit lighter, and I have some shapes I'd like to try. So definitely check out these boards. He's got them at really reasonable prices right now for a custom board. You really can't beat it. Dominique and I got out there and we started testing out the swell. It was really good, really big, a little bit disorganized, but I could tell with that high aspect foil, it was going to be pretty good. And then something happened. Huge swell out here at, at, at a Cabrillo. Really big swell. We don't usually get it here. Irwin ripped his wing, so he's gonna go grab my four. Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. Maybe we can get Dominic here on one of the rides. Yeah, Irwin's wing, just the canopy just ripped apart from the strut. I've never seen it before, but he's been riding it overpowered, and it was super windy this day. And yeah, here's Dominique coming in, testing out that new board and getting a feel for the swell. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked, you can see. It's really important, though, that you can get into each other's cars, because then by giving Irwin my code, he was able to get in there and grab my four meter and get back on the water. Dude, the bumps are so good! The bumps are crazy! Yeah. The best I've seen Cabrillo in a while! Alright, we got to our way back. And you can tell I'm not really used to riding these high aspect foils. Uh, they definitely don't turn like the Viper 150. But the glide is pretty crazy on this. You're able to pump a lot. And this isn't even that big a foil. If I had been riding an even bigger foil with this aspect ratio, it would have been pretty pretty interesting to see how far I could ride. All right, let's do it! Let's go! Don't do both, don't do both. <laughs> It was pretty eerie conditions. You can see it's a little bit overcast. The swell was really big and disorganized. I, I really, I'm telling you, it was big and disorganized and super windy. I was overpowered on the five and I like to ride powered up. But you can see here's one of my better rides that I was able to do on the big swell. Coming down, getting some speed, really booking it, trying to stay, you know, in the pocket and then you know maintaining my speed by looking for those channels seeing what i can connect to i haven't had to pump yet and then here i start to pump a little bit trying to get across to the next one again and i am able to connect to there and start gliding again now i'm in the good pocket again and touch down there a little bit kind of messed me up really having some good long rides powered rides getting the feel for the foil. I had to repower here just a little bit. I kind of ran out of speed there. Like I said, a little bit bigger foil though. I probably could have just connected it to this one that I, you know, connect to right here. You know, that was definitely connectable. Even on that foil it was connectable, but I was still getting used to these disorganized big bumps on this high aspect foil. Man, these are crazy. After about 45 minutes of that craziness, Dominique and I ended up at Angel's Gate, which is one of the openings into the L.A. Harbor. You can see the lighthouse right there. And we had lost all track of Sam and Irwin. They had kind of taken off downwind and I suspected gone into the harbor. But I wanted to stay outside where the bumps are. So I went over to Dominique. And I was like, hey, man, do you want to stay out here with me? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Little did I know he had taken a pretty good fall and sliced his wetsuit down to the skin a little bit earlier. <laughs>
And I'm really glad we stayed out there because once we got past that point, the wind kind of settled down five, 10 miles an hour and the bumps became more organized. They weren't quite as good, but you can see here, they were just a little bit more organized. And on that high aspect foil, I was able to do some pumping and try and connect them and work on my down winding skills. Once again, a big foil here. I think I could have gone in perpetuity. Is that a word? I don't know. But I didn't have quite enough foil for, for those size bumps. I also worked a little bit on riding toe side on the weak side of the wind swell so that I can go out to sea and that will allow me to keep you know, hopefully downwinding forever by going both directions. But you see there the wing flips and kind of messed me up a little bit. All right, we're going to go in the center, I guess. Looks like Belmont. I really wasn't too sure where we were going, but I, I knew that if we went in this entrance, we would at least get to Belmont. Eventually, the problem is once you go in the breakwater, the wind gets a lot lighter at Belmont. So, you know, it started off with this nuking wind. Then we had like pretty decent wind from Angel's Gate to this ends up being Queen's Gate that we go in. And you can see there Dominique enjoying some of the, the nicer, more organized swell in the moderate wind. And then in the background, you can see the Los Angeles Harbor, the shipyard, where all of these big shipping container freighters come through to, to dock at port. And so that's a little bit sketchy when you go in there and you're in this light wind. If you fall, you're stuck right in a major shipping lane, which is kind of that's no good. We had thought about going down around all the breakwater, but that would have meant we would have had to go slightly upwind at the end to get back to Belmont. And here I am just showing some of that downwinding on this really, at this point, pretty small swell and a lighter wind. Now we're inside the breakwater. The wind's a little lighter here. I just fell looking back for Dominique to see where he's going. Got to be careful in here. Probably need to not fall anymore. Just because sometimes the wind is super light in here. There should be some kites over there. I don't see any kites. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. What is going on? That's amazing. You see that? There's a sea lion in there with me. This is so cool. He was chasing Dominique. I don't know if he was mad at Dominique or what. That is crazy. I know this looks like a photo of the Loch Ness monster, but yeah, look at this right here. There is a sea lion, a giant sea lion. It was chasing Dominique and barking at him, and we couldn't get on foil because the wind was dead, and Dominique's just yelling back at it. And honestly, like it was one of the funniest things ever, and I really needed it because I was getting really frustrated that we were stuck in this no-wind zone. The wind had just completely died. Yeah, we're having some trouble in here. We're gonna have to just really not come off oil if we get back on. We gotta get back to land. We can either cut straight across and then try and call and get a, picked up by the other guys if they made it, or we can try and go all the way to Belmont like we're supposed to. Which I'm not even sure where it is. I think it's behind that island, and that's why I can't see the kites, but I don't know. Let's go! Let's go! And thank God the wind picked up just a little bit and we were able to get on foil and get back to Belmont. <laughs> I thought you guys come in earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> the original plan was to have someone wait there with the gear, but luckily we were able to fit everything in Irwin's truck without even disassembling it which was nice because they had been waiting for a while we were getting cold we were able to just drive everyone back up to cabrillo and yeah belmont was starting to get a little bit more wind belmont's funny like that it can it just comes and goes that's why i don't really wing there very much that and the stingrays Here's a map of our trip, pretty close in length and time to the first one, just a few less miles and a little bit longer because we were stuck sitting in the water with no wind for 15, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. You can also see that we're hugging the breakwater and where the two openings are. This map is actually missing the third breakwater, which continues on to the right. It's a long distance 
from that breakwater to swim into the harbor. And I, what would you do? End up in the middle of the harbor? It would be a nightmare. It would make such a spectacle. Either that or you're just going to sit on the breakwater waiting for a rescue. It also shows you the shipping lane tracks. And you can see like where we were sitting and stuck in the water. That's where it was. That's where the shipping lane tracks are. And at that point is when the wind really starts to get light. Luckily, we made it the whole way, though. The wind graph from Angel's Gate, which is about halfway where the wind was moderate, you can see 20 to 30 miles an hour throughout most of the afternoon. That was where it was pretty good wind, not too crazy, not too light. Then if you look at further along, you can see that around 4 o'clock, the wind just completely drops down to like almost 10 miles an hour at one point. That's when we were sitting in the water, unable to get going on our fives. Then the wind came up just enough to where we were able to get into Belmont. And I don't have the graph for Cabrillo itself, but it was even windier all afternoon. Now, I don't want you to think these downwinders are always a success because two days later, I tried another downwinder up at Point Magoo and it was a disaster. The forecast didn't look quite so good, but the wind came up early. So I got the guys and we went up to Point Magoo. We actually involved someone else to try and have him drop us off before he winged. We ended up ruining his afternoon because... We were not able to get going. I popped a strut on a wing. The wind died. By the time we got back to Leo, where we had planned to end up, the wind was not very good there. So yeah, it's a roll of the dice sometimes. Definitely won't involve anyone else in our disasters in the future. I felt really bad about that. But there are things you can do to give yourself the best chance of success. Oh man, I did not expect to get another... Uh, downwinder in, in two big downwinders in, in three days. I'm exhausted. I didn't think about the fact that my muscles would still be sore from the last one. I'm cold. You see me like, oh, I just got showered and I, you know, I'm sunburned. I forgot sunscreen, the first downwinder on my face. Uh, some thoughts definitely for the downwinding that, that higher aspect foil made a huge difference, uh, in terms of being able to glide and pump. But that being said, I was glad to have the the 170, the Viper 170 on the first one just for maneuverability for the filming purposes. And also, it's just more fun to ride swell when you're turning better. So we have the wing, so we don't need to ride forever. We can ride the good parts. And then if you get into a section where you need the wing, you can always repower. So I don't know. We'll see how I feel about that in the future. Maybe I could have just done a high aspect, smaller, you know, width foil. And maybe that would be best of both worlds. I don't know. But I really like the Viper. It's just fun. I re I'm looking forward to a Viper 2 if they ever make one. That's uh, I've heard that that's maybe in the, in the works. I don't know. I think that could be awesome. Just a little bit more glide if they could get out of it. Maybe just a little bit more aspect ratio, a little bit thinner. It would be perfect. Yeah. that It's also that, that second downwinder we did today, a little bit sketchy because there's no there's no off ramp. Your off ramp is a, that breakwater. And I don't know, you guess you could like crawl onto it if the pounding of the, the swell is not too bad and just sit there and, you know, make a phone call for the Coast Guard. But I, I, I don't want to get rescued ever. I, I would... I would have to be in a pretty dire situation to where I'd want to get rescued. I would swim a long time before that or drift if I got too tired. I told Dominique, I was like, look, we're not, <laughs> we need to get on foil or we need to paddle like one or the other. Cause I'm not getting picked up by the coast guard. Definitely. Uh, the first downwinder felt a lot safer and better planned. Uh, if, if Irwin's wing had blown up halfway through and set up at the beginning of the session, that would have been a nightmare. Would have been a nightmare. If you do these enough, you're going to have a nightmare. You're going to have an epic. Like, it's just going to happen. Wing gear just is not that durable. The wind is not always very reliable. You just have to be okay with that. If you're the kind of person that is okay with calling a Coast Guard, maybe that that's fine. Like, some guys, are they, they do it all the time, I guess. I don't want to do that very often, so... I just want to be make sure I, I really have my systems wired. No jumping, you know, on these downwinders. Unless on, on the Malibu one, sure, because then I can off ramp, you know, paddle in and, and whatever. But on this one today, no, no jumping, no nothing, no no trying anything too crazy because there's not a lot of room for error. I hope you guys like this video. I haven't edited it yet, but it's I think it's gonna be a good video. Peace.